So, guys, it is Halloween, and uh, we do have some spooky news for you. Uh, and what's spookier than a bunch of people losing their jobs? I don't have anything spookier than that. Uh, Ring of Honor is releasing all of its talent and going on hiatus before a major rebranding after the first quarter of 2022. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, out of all the companies, AEW and WWE included, I think they handled the pandemic in the most humane way out of all of them and did the right thing and deserve a lot of praise for that. But uh, what they're doing now, I don't know if that's a direct result of them doing the right thing and the humane thing, or if this was something inevitable for them, but the time and wise, it seems kind of, uh, kind of fishy, like it's probably related. Uh, JTG, uh, Jimothy, Timothy, Gisanti, uh please uh, fill us in on this spooky, scary story. So this might be the craziest thing I've seen happen in wrestling in years. I cannot ever recall a company releasing every member of its roster not only within a small time period, but all in the same day. I, I think it's unheard of. Um, Ring of Honor was once a pillar of the wrestling industry. It was a distant, but still legit number three to WWE. And I guess at a time, TNA slash Impact. And in the last few years, they have faltered. They have fallen quite a bit. The truth is, while it's not something you know, that's fun to talk about when the elite were there as the bullet club or just even as the elite, they were propping the company up for a very long time. And ring of honor was relying on them to sell shows. They had incredible talent on their roster, but they knew how valuable the elite were and the elite were constantly at the top of their card. And when the elite left ring of honor and new Japan to create AEW, Ring of Honor was left in the lurch because all those promising stars that they had didn't feel like stars. They felt like guys who were second to the guys who left. And Danny, you made a great point. They handled the pandemic in the most honorable way, no pun intended, that I can imagine. They were not putting on shows, and they were still paying every member of their talent their salary. Now, granted, a Ring of Honor salary is not a lot. I, I know, like, there have been plenty of stories over the years of their talent not really being able to afford to uh, just live off their salary alone, but still, that's money for doing nothing for 18 months. That's, that's incredible. And I'm going to offer a little bit of a differing opinion about how this is being presented, about everybody losing their jobs, because you're absolutely right. It's terrifying. It's scary. But Ring of Honor is going to be running their shows from till the end of the year. They're going to be running through, uh, they're going to be doing their tapings for November, and they're going to be doing their big end of the year pay-per-view final battle in December. And then January 1st, all of their talent who are contracted through the year or a little bit longer are going to be released. Anybody who's contracted even longer are going to be paid through March 31st. But, and this is why I think what ring of honor did was in my opinion, not the worst is they know that they're not going to be doing shows from mid December or end of December through April. That's a long time to not be working if you're a wrestler. And that's a long time for a company to be paying someone for not working. So as opposed to keeping them under contract and doing nothing with them, a la Lucha Underground a few years ago, where so many stars were under contract and not getting paid and not allowed to wrestle anywhere else, even though for years nothing was happening. Ring of Honor is saying, we're going to work through the end of the year and then as opposed to keeping you doing nothing and not getting paid, we're going to give you the opportunity to work elsewhere. And for a lot of talent, that's still scary. That's still not a guarantee. But for some top-tier talent, 
this is going to be an opportunity for them to go off and still make money in, uh, in a top way, in a big way. There are so many promising guys in Ring of Honor who have been catching the attention of the wrestling audience for a while now, but because Ring of Honor hasn't really been in a position to highlight these guys, they're just floundering, doing nothing, and it's a shame. They're I, Looking at the roster, and it's sort of unbelievable to look at these names that are just doing nothing in the grand scheme of the wrestling industry. You have guys like... Jay Lethal, who is a great, you have guys like um, Roosh, who could be doing so much more. You have guys who are popular and young, like Danhausen, very nice, very evil. And the guy was on Conan. The guy was in a segment with Conan O'Brien, and they didn't know how to push this guy. There is so much talent there. Bandito, who is there, is not only the Ring of Honor world champion, he's the pro wrestling guerrilla champion. He's the PWG champion. He's one of the best in the world, and nobody's talking about him because he's in Ring of Honor. Now, a lot of these guys made that decision. They made the choice to be in Ring of Honor. And while Ring of Honor could be a very safe choice for a lot of these guys, now that they are sort of in a position to piss or get off the pot, I think we're going to see a lot of these guys thrive. As it is, today was the announcement about all these releases. Bandito is already going to be in GCW for a couple of dates. Uh, the Briscoe brothers, who have been in Ring of Honor from day one and have never left. That is, like, I, Ring of Honor was founded in 2002, and it, they've been there for 20 years they're the GCW tag team champions now. They had to have known this was coming and Ring of Honor was definitely giving them something to do. That's great. I, there is so much talent on that roster who I'm so sad are out of a job, but I am so excited for them to be allowed to move on to bigger and better things while Ring of Honor finds its stuff out. I've been seeing a lot of people joking online that what's going to be happening is Ring of Honor 2.0 because they keep saying they're going to be back in April they're going to be back for their Super Card of Honor show, and they're going to be restructuring. If these guys, if Ring of Honor's parent company, Sinclair, is not going to be giving them the money that they need to really be giving these guys a good wage as top stars, let them be a smaller company for smaller stars to, short, to sort of uh, cut their teeth and make a name for themselves while these bigger guys can go off to bigger and better. And... I, again, I could go through this roster with you guys, and I, I more than half of them, I could say, I could see them going to AEW. I could see them going to Impact. I could see them going to WWE. I want to see Jonathan Gresham versus Brian Danielson. I think that's going to be a banger of a match. I want to see Flip Gordon maybe sort of rejoin his the elite book Flip. I, I, I think uh, Brody King joining his tag team partner malachi black on a bigger stage would be awesome there are so many names there's so much potential it's scary and it's a sad time as a long ring of honor fan this is a ring of honor mask this is a ring of honor show that i've had for years i've been a ring of honor fan and a part of that company in a weird way for a long time i want to see them thrive i don't want to see them be lol roh but Let's see what happens. That's I, I'm trying to be optimistic. Well, uh, that was beautifully spoken from a guy who's had so many personal experiences with ROH. So I think uh, no one uh, feels the magnitude of, of this story more than you outside of, you know, people in the company. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I have... I can't possibly add anything to what you said. Besides, uh, this is my biggest takeaway. You mentioned Conan, uh, so fuck Jay Leno is, uh, I gotta throw that in there anytime Conan gets mentioned. Uh, so yeah, fuck Jay Leno. Um, um, Nerf Gun, uh, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, that's you, Drake Maverick. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, is that me? Okay, I guess that's me. <laughs> Anyway, first of all, all I wanted to say is this is now 
probably the second kind of semi-serious discussion we're having and we're all in costumes and i can't wait for these clips to go up online that's <laughs> james it's like, like the, it's the fever dream of what aew's main event was that's what i'm saying you just <laughs> you just poured your heart out about ring of honor and you're in a freaking generico mask it's, it's gonna be so great <laughs> anyway uh when i saw this news pop up on in our group chat I read, I read it. I, I, I read the Reddit thread and everything. And the first thing I think of, thought in my head was, "This ROH shit is wild," and it is it, because there's so many implications here. And I think James covered all of them. Where everybody's going, they're they're restructuring. What's going to happen with the company? It's such a ripple effect. It's unbelievable. But one thing I hadn't thought about until you mentioned it, James, was AEW starting and not just them losing you know, the elite with the Bucks and Kenny. And I don't know after that how much longer the their New Japan relationship continued, if at all. But it's ever since AEW has started, they have just seemed to be in a decline. You know, I didn't know anybody on their roster after the Bucks left because I just stopped watching or paying attention to it, I think would be the better phrase. I just completely checked out of ring of honor slightly how i kind of checked out of new uh new japan there were some guys still there still i knew but outside of the big matches i wasn't paying attention at all i didn't know who their champ was you know i knew jay lethal was still there but i know jay lethal because of the greatest promo of all time with rick flair <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know the Briscoes from their matches with the Bucks, and then I know Danhausen because he's Danhausen and he's fucking lighting the world on fire right now. Other than that, I got nothing for, out of that, you know, nothing from Ring of Honor. So I'm learning now who these people are because now there's so many opportunities to see where they end up going, and I'm very intrigued to see where everything goes here because, like you said, there are a lot of interesting people. Uh, opportunities with people in wwe in uh gcw in aew there's a lot that could go on and it's both sad yet kind of exciting yeah exciting is a good uh way of looking at it i think it's almost like uh, the indie slash aew slash new japan version of uh, NXT right now. We're going to get all these call-ups to these different rosters all across the board. And uh, it should be it should be interesting. It's a fresh start for a lot of people and a fresh start for people like us who kind of checked out with Ring of Honor and haven't been uh, keeping up. But uh, I'm going to throw it over to uh, Brophy Kingston. Uh, no relation to Kofi Kingston, but possible relation to Eddie Kingston. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, what do you what do you got? How do you feel about this sad situation? I mean, I think these gentlemen covered <laughs> enough where I almost have to say nothing. But um, the perfect word that does come to mind, me being a maybe a casual ROH fan, I've watched it in the past a few times. I'm I'm cool on Jay Lethal. Like I like a, f a few of the um, talents there. I think the perfect word is bittersweet. As Rev said, it's sad and, you know, people are out of jobs and that's always something serious to think about. But the opportunities and the excitement for what's to come from most of the talent there, I think that's the the best outlook. That's the, the thing that we're looking forward to most. And also, I hope they do, you know, in April, I hope they come back stronger and do a 2.0 and, and upgrade. I'm here for that. It's... It's interesting to think about because for the longest time, Ring of Honor was sort of a super indie company. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, they had signed the best of the best when it came to indie talent. And they, the people who were grinding their teeth in smaller promotions all around the country, Ring of Honor was like the pinnacle of that. It's like, if you were in Ring of Honor, you were a top indie guy. And then when WWE established NXT as what it was, where they were signing all these indie guys, Ring of Honor was sort of losing that. Like, if you were a top NXT guy, you were probably a big guy in Ring of Honor. And now with AEW, beyond the fact that the elite left and what that did to their roster, 
AEW is a hundred percent that, oh, if you're a top indie guy, you're, you're being scouted by AEW. AEW is presenting indie wrestling on a grand scale. So Ring of Honor is probably going to need to change what it's trying to be when it comes back. WWE has the entertainment factor. AEW has the indie wrestling factor. Uh, NXT is sort of like, I, I don't even know how to describe NXT 2.0. It, it's not bad, but I, I just don't know how to describe it. Oh, and okay. Impact, well done. <laughs> well, 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 bravo, Miscellaneous. Sir. <laughs> truly I love that. and impact is exactly like i chad i wish you had saved it for for uh impact because impact is miscellaneous they they're their own weird universe and ring of honor is going to need to be something different if they want to reestablish themselves as a contender in american wrestling there there aren't a lot of open markets left and gcw is covering the hardcore stuff so I, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what this restructuring and what this rebranding for them is going to actually entail. You know, I don't, I don't, sorry, Danny, I don't want to leave out the women's roster side of this either. Apparently there are a lot of very good uh, women over there that a lot of people online and a lot of people in the know are excited to go see in other companies. So I'm looking forward to, brushing up on these people because admittedly i don't know but i'm sure james you have a few but <laughs> I, I i can say that there are some incredibly talented women in ring of honor but i can also say that in the 20 or so years that ring of honor has been a company ring of honor has not cared about their women's division nearly as much as it should that i knew but that's why I'm interested to see some of these uh, women get new opportunities. This could be an right. opportunity for AEW to help bolster their women's division. Maybe we see a few of them in NXT. Uh, Impact obviously always has a good women's division, or at least of late. So, although we'll get to that in a, in a little bit as well. So, there's going to be a lot of opportunities on that side, of, you know, on that side of things too. So, like I said before, it's it's exciting despite the fact as we've established, it's very sad to see. These people, you know, lose the stability of their jobs. And, you know, hopefully Ring of Honor comes back because it would be sad to see it go as well. 